Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology here on Educator.com. Last time we took a look at classical conditioning as part of learning. Now we're going to be looking at operant conditioning as part of learning. So what the AP folks would like us to know at the College Board is they'd like us to be able to predict the effects of operant conditioning. And some terms you're going to be familiar with here are positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, punishment, and schedules of reinforcement. And we're going to predict how practice, schedules of reinforcement, and motivation will influence the quality of learning. How well do we learn something? Now, it says interpret graphs that exhibit the results of learning experiments. To be honest with you, you don't really have to worry about learning how to read the graphs, but if you know how to read a graph, that's going to be helpful. But if you understand the concepts, this is going to be doable. Very easy. And also, they don't typically put those on the AP exam. And then providing examples of how biological constraints create learning predispositions. And so how our biology both increases and de decreases the likelihood that we're going to be learning something. One of the early folks who uh, researched the more operant or respondent conditioning that was there was a guy named Thorndike. And so he looked at in what he called the law of effect. And that's where responses that produce a satisfying effect in a particular situation become more likely to occur again in that same situation. And responses that produce a discomforting or unpleasant effect become less likely to occur again in that situation. In other words, when better things happen after we do something, we are more likely to do that behavior again. So connectionism. Organisms connect behaviors to what occurs after. And this is an early form of behaviorism. And um, as a result of his work, Thorndike is sometimes known as the father of modern educational psychology. And so one of the ways that we're going to be looking at this is, is in class with teachers and at home with parents. When you do something that your teachers or parents like, what is their response? When you do something that they don't like, what is their response? So what happens after you do a behavior? Are you getting a pleasant response? Are you getting a, an unpleasant response afterwards? So when Thorndike was doing his research, he was taking a look at this little cat in the box right here. And the responses of the cat were, the idea was that the cat was going to be trying to escape that box. And there was a way for the cat to be able to do that. And you notice that over here on the vertical axis, the time required to escape in seconds. So between 100 and 200 seconds in the first few, and then it jumped way up, and then it came down. And but it, all these different trials, you know, 30, 40, 70 trials, after that first 20, 25 trials or so, the cat had an uneven but fairly low, steady uh, number of seconds to get out of the box. But there was a, an uneven learning right prior to that during the acquisition of the behavior. And so early on, um, in the first trial, the stimuli inside the puzzle box, what was the cat doing? Well, notice the, the size of the arrows here. So scratching at the bars, a lot of that. Pushing at the ceiling, a lot of that. Digging at the door, a lot of that. Howling, a little bit less, but still a fair amount. Lots of miscellaneous behaviors. And finally, pressing the level. And once they press the level, or the lever rather, they're going to be good to go and they can leave. After uh, many trials, what does the cat do in the box? Doesn't really scratch at the bars very much. Doesn't push at the ceiling. Doesn't dig at the door. Doesn't howl. Doesn't do a lot of other behaviors. Instead, pressing the, um, the lever to get out of the box. Boom, the law of effect. 